just discovered your margins are going to be the highest if you're able to yo what is up everybody on youtube it's your boy 97 kicks back at again with another video in today's video i'm going to give you guys 10 tips on how you can maximize your profits today in 2020 let's get right into this all right so starting it off with tip number one use coupons i don't know how i just found this out but in all your foot stores including foot locker foot action champs east bay all that stuff they all have these survey coupons that i literally just discovered and you can use it multiple times so basically how it works is that each time you go to a foot locker or a foot action or champs or whatever one of those stores right so after you purchase the shoe you're going to get a receipt right and at the bottom of the receipt it should say right here it should say share your feedback and it has a link and then it has a code and basically you go to that link and you fill out the survey and on your next purchase of fifty dollars or more you get ten dollars off so that's just another great way to maximize your profits so you can use it multiple times so if you are picking up multiple shoes from these foot lockers or foot actions right you buy a shoe and then you do the survey and then within a day or two you should get an email from that foot locker or foot action with the coupon and then you go to the next store and you use that coupon and you save ten dollars right there so that can definitely improve your margins right there all right moving right along to tip number two sell locally so this is also another really important tip especially for all your newbie resellers right there right now StockX, goats all these online places to sell your sneakers are no longer good options and let me tell you a few reasons why so on these websites like StockX or Goat, they charge these ridiculous seller fees, 9.5% seller Ooh. fees. So that already eats a huge chunk of your profits. Not only that, but the prices on StockX and Goat are usually a little bit lower than what most people would sell them locally for because not only are sellers charged with 9.5% seller fees, but also buyers, they're also screwed too because they have to pay taxes on top of that. They have to pay 3% PayPal processing fees on top of that. So it's really a huge advantage that you can do a local deal because buyers are willing to pay a little bit more because they don't have to pay taxes or PayPal processing fees if you have a local deal. But yeah guys, sell locally because you're gonna be a lot of money on seller fees and plus buyers are more likely to pay a little bit extra just because they don't have to pay taxes or shipping or any of that stuff all right tip number three don't sleep on grade school sizes i know i know a lot of you guys you're probably thinking what's grade school sizes come on 97 i thought men's sizes are where it's at and yeah and some cases it is but Actually, in a lot of cases, grade school sizes actually have better margins than men's sizes. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Because grade school sizes, just think about it, grade school sizes, retail is a lot lower on them. Just like those Jordan 12 University goals that came out the other day, right? Grade school was only 140, while men's was 190. So let's say that you're just getting to reselling, you don't have a lot of capital to spend. Grade school sizes is actually a really good way to go because there's less risk involved because you don't have to put in as much capital. And not only that, but the margins should be as good and sometimes even better than the men's sizes. Because for grade school sizes, just think about it. Who is the buyer usually going to be for grade school sizes? For grade school sizes, it's either the man buying the shoe for his girl or for their kids. So if it's buying for their girl or buying for their kids, they're more likely to be spending more money than the guys who are just buying the sneakers for themselves. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying there's much there's a little bit more wiggle room that's possible with grade school sizes because the retail price is lower than the men's sizes and also the type of buyers, they're more willing to spend more for those sneakers. So that's why guys don't sleep on grade school sizes. All right, so tip number four, always start with a slightly higher asking price than what you're trying to sell the sneaker for. So for example, if I have a pair of Jordan 1 Smoke Rays, if I'm looking to get 280 for that sneaker, I'm gonna ask for 300, because if you have a starting asking price slightly higher than what you're willing to let them go for, then when the buyer negotiates with you, you could drop it by a couple of dollars 
and then it will just make the buyer feel like they've got a good deal out of it. It'll make the buyer feel like they were able to negotiate a little bit, it makes them more satisfied with the deal that they're getting. So always start your asking price slightly higher than what you're willing to give it up for. All right, moving on to tip number five, build a clientele and build a reputation. So you've already done some reselling, you've sold several sneakers already. So when you do these types of things, you always wanna build a relationship with the buyer. You, I don't know, maybe add them on Instagram or uh, get their phone number, right? And this is really helpful because in the future, when you're doing a, a big transaction, when you're doing a high stakes transaction, right? And you want to be as trustworthy as possible so that buyers will trust you and buying that sneaker, knowing that it's legit, knowing that you're a legit seller, knowing that you ship on time and everything like that. So it's always good to build a good uh, relationship with the buyer. It's always good to build a clientele because then you can have all these references of all these happy buyers that can vouch for you when you're doing a high ticket transaction. Um, not only that, but like whenever you have a sneaker that you're trying to sell, you already have a list of sneaker heads who are into sneakers who will be willing to buy your sneakers. So that's always good. And yeah, you just wanna be a reputable, a reputable person so that more people are likely to buy from you. All right, tip number six, be patient. So for a lot of sneakers, it's actually a hold. Not every sneaker is a quick flip. I know here in 2020, we've had so many sneakers that have been good quick flips, especially those fives, like the Fire Red Fives and the Ultimate Grey Fives, those were good quick flips. But for certain sneakers, they are actually holds. For example, like Jordan 1s, like the Jordan 1 Smoke Gray, I think that that is a good hold because right now they're not going for that much over retail, they're going for like 250. But I think that within three to six months time, especially in holiday season, that they're gonna go up. So a lot of sneakers are good holds. So you really need to be patient when uh, reselling sneakers, okay? There are certain sneakers that are good quick flips, but there are a lot of sneakers that are good holds. So for the holds, you really need to be patient. I know, I know you guys want to get your money as quick as possible, but trust me, it pays to be patient. All right, moving right along to tip number seven. If you're going to resell a sneaker, don't buy that sneaker in your size. And this is extremely important, especially with all you newbie resellers out there who are also sneaker heads. If you buy a sneaker that you're saying you're going to resell, but if you buy it in your size, guess what? there's a high probability that you're going to end up wearing them and therefore drop the resale value tremendously. Ooh. So an example of this could be my Travis Scott ones right here. So I got these in my size eight and a half, but I wasn't planning on reselling it. I was just planning on wearing it. So, but if there was someone else out there who was planning on reselling it, if you get your size, chances are you might end up wearing them. Just because let's say you won this sneaker off a of raffle, you feel really good about it. Oh my God, how did I win these Travis Scott ones? It was like one in like a thousand chance of actually winning these. And originally you didn't really like the sneaker. You're like backwards swoosh, what? This is such a stupid and basic concept, but you get the sneaker in your hand and you feel it and you're like, wow, the quality is actually not bad at all. Wow, this tumble leather is really soft. You see pictures on feet, you see other people rocking them, and then you start feeling, you, the sneaker starts growing on you. You're like, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and wear these sneakers. And then you just aren't able to resell them because the prices have dropped tremendously. Just from you wearing that sneaker and that sneaker touching the ground, it is no longer dead stock, and you have just lost a ton of potential profits right there. So when reselling sneakers, do not buy that sneaker in your size. Like for example, me, I'm an eight and a half, right? But if I buy a size nine or a size eight, those are still money sizes. As you guys know, sizes seven through nine and a half, those are usually the money sizes. And I'm an eight and a half, so that's a perfect money size right there. But to prevent me, who am a reseller as well as a sneaker head, from the sneaker growing on me and me wanting to wear that sneaker, I can purposely buy the sneakers in either size eight or size nine so that I'm less tempted to actually wear that sneaker. All right, so tip number eight, buy in bulk. So these are the sneakers that you buy off of other resellers that you didn't hit for retail. So if another smaller reseller, if they have a ton of sneakers that they're trying to get rid of and you wanna cash them out and you wanna buy all those sneakers, 
to hold. You can negotiate with the seller, especially if they have it in bulk. You can say, you know, if I buy 10 pairs off of you, could you give me $10 off per pair, $20 off per pair? Something like that, you know? Because if you do a bulk buy, the seller is more likely to give you a discount because they're making profits off of each sneaker and you're bulk buying. So they're more likely to give you some discounts so that you can increase your margins when you hold that sneaker on the long run. So for example, for me, I wanted to buy those smoke red ones. There was a seller who was selling them and I said, okay, if I buy two, can you give me $10 off each? And he said that was okay. So yeah, try to try to, try to to negotiate, you know, try to do a bulk buy. And the seller will more likely than not give you a small discount. All right, so tip number nine, enter in as many raffles as you guys can. At the end of the day, your margins are going to be the highest if you're able to hit that sneaker for retail. In order to hit that sneaker for retail, you need to enter these raffles. And I know you guys already know like the Foot Locker reservation app, the Foot Apps reservation app, yes, but there's also your local sneaker store. So don't forget to be on top of those. So for me, what I like to do is I like to follow Soul Links and I also like to follow Keith Adams. And usually they have links to all the raffles for hype drops. So for example, like those Off-White Force that just came out. Keith Adams, I think he had all those links right on, on one post where you can enter all those raffles and that way you can maximize your chances of hitting those sneakers for retail. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have the most highest margin if you're able to get the sneaker for retail. So don't forget to enter as many raffles as possible, do your research, and yeah, hopefully you hit. All right, so tip number 10. Cash is always king. So when doing sneaker transactions, your number one preferred method of payment is going to be cash. And let me tell you why. For other apps, for example, like PayPal, like Venmo, uh, like Cash App, even Zelle, there is a possibility of the buyer filing for a chargeback and you getting scammed. No, God! No, God, please, no! I know PayPal is a reputable brand, also Zelle, but it is still possible for the buyer to file a chargeback. So I think the safest way of payment method is going to be cash. And I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, but 97, Aren't there a lot of counterfeit bills as well? And this is why I tell you guys, you need to stay woke. So I'm not gonna go over the entire method of how to legit check cash. There's already tons of videos out there on YouTube that I can show you. But basically the easiest method I found to legit check cash is, so you have the dollar bill, right? So you see the little shirt of uh, Abraham Lincoln or uh, Andrew Jackson or Benjamin Franklin, right? And then you just scratch their shirt, right? And you should be feeling some ridges. It should be rough, it shouldn't be smooth. You just scratch their shirt and it should be feeling ridges, right? And then for like higher number bills, the ones that you care about the most, like the 20s and the 100. So for the $100 bills, you need to show the bill up to the light and onto the right of Benjamin Franklin, you should see another portrait face of Benjamin Franklin see-through on the bill. And uh, like I said, there's tons of videos already out there on YouTube, so you need to go watch them to stay woke. Um, another method is to use a money pen. So those money pens, those are really cheap. You can find on Amazon or whatever. I personally don't really use that, but I know some people do, so you can also do that just to be safe. Um, but not only that, but like all these other apps, like uh, for example, Venmo, PayPal. PayPal takes a 3% transaction fee. So if it's a goods and services transaction, it's gonna take a 3% transaction fee. So that's going to eat up into your profits a little bit. As for the other apps like Venmo, so for Venmo, you have to wait one to three business days for your funds to be transferred into your bank. So that's another factor that you have to consider too. So in my opinion, cash is always king at the end of the day. But yeah guys, that was 10 tips on how you can maximize your profits when reselling sneakers. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to share it with your sneakerhead friends, your sneaker reselling friends. Don't forget to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, turn on post notifications because I'm dropping videos all the time. And it's been your boy 97 Kicks, and we out y'all.